in the name of Assembly Member Darren Johnson. Thank you. Yes, this is the question on climate change. Yeah. Thank you. Um, well, I'm, I'm glad to start there, actually, because I think some of the debate about capacity and some of the options um, it does seem to take place without a proper awareness of the climate change framework within which we operate. And we have taken the Climate Change Act, obviously passed by the previous uh, government, but uh, there's no disposition to amend that at this point. Uh, so that is the framework within which we are operating. Um, and we have had a dialogue with the Climate Change Committee. Indeed, one of our members, Julia King, is a member of the Climate Change Committee. Um, and that's been a very important part of our work. As you probably know, we issued a consultation paper on climate change in the early stages of our work, uh, inviting comments um, on that. Now, um, our conclusion um, is that it is possible to increase capacity in London's airports um, while maintaining progress towards the government's climate change commitment. And that view is shared by the Committee on Climate Change. As you know, there is no explicit target for a reduction in aviation admissions. There is a target for reduction in overall emissions by 2050, um, but aviation has to find its place within that. But it isn't subject to a specific sectoral target. And our view, and that of the Climate Change Committee, is that <coughs> we can see envisage an expansion in aviation um, up to 2050, compatible with the climate change um, objectives, um, but that that expansion cannot be uh, unlimited, uh, because what we aim to achieve is the maintaining emissions by 2050 from aviation at the 2005 level, and that can be consistent with an overall 80% reduction for the economy as a whole. The Climate Change Committee recognises that reducing aviation emissions is probably the most difficult bit. I mean, Lord Stern has said to me that he thinks the last barrel of fossil fuel will be burned in an aircraft uh, because it is more difficult to convert aircraft to biofuels, etc., than it is. I, I, admittedly, to... but when we had witnesses before the Assembly's Transport Committee, um, they did express concern, um, some of them, that the assumptions you make about the, um, the reductions in the rest of the economy were so ambitious in order to facilitate um, a, 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 a continued um, level of emissions in the aviation sector, and they, they, they cast doubt on the realism of that. Well, they're then contesting the view of the Climate Change Committee, and we take our cue from them. Um, okay, okay. Can I can I move move, um, move on then? Because in terms of the um, the forecasts that that, that, that you've made, you made, you have um, in your report said that if there is to be um, expansion in aviation capacity, um, there does need to be um, increases in the uh, in in the price of um, carbon on them um, on on aviation in order to um, constrain demand. That's correct, isn't it? Yes. And. Um, it appears um, from, your, um, from your projections um, that by 2050, someone from Edinburgh taking, say, a return trip to um, Ibiza, um, they'd be paying an extra £150 um, if, you, if you added in an additional runway at Heathrow. Is that, is that correct in terms of your assumptions? Um, I, I'm not sure I could translate our assumptions specifically to uh, an, an Aberdeen... Uh, trip, um, but I think there, it does imply quite a significant increase in the cost of flying, yes, and I think that's correct. That, uh, Phil, just could you comment on that? Um, it, it implies some form, of, some form of intervention to reduce demand for aviation. The, the form of intervention which we were able to model through the tools we had available to us was, was pricing. Mm. Um, and if the form of intervention chosen was pricing, then the model suggests that, yes, it would be quite a significant increase, as Howard says. I couldn't put a specific price on a specific flight, but it would be, it would be a noticeable increase by 2050. 
there, there are other forms of intervention that mm. might be available, but that was the one that we could model. Again, are you comfortable that um, that, that projection is, is politically realistic in terms of it being um, implemented, that, um, that, that uh, politicians will be happy to go ahead and say that there will be significant increase in the, uh, in the cost of, of, of flights, the £150 example that I, that, that I gave in terms of an increase, in order to facilitate expansion in, in, in runway capacity. Oh, are, are, you, are you happy that that's a, a realistic um, um, political ask? Uh, well, I'm hesitant in front of a lot of politicians to give a view on what's politically acceptable or not. What we are showing is what's the implications of commitments that the government has already made are, in that we see that unconstrained demand for aviation will continue to grow, and that that demand would be, if allowed to grow unconstrained without any use of either a pricing mechanism or carbon trading, that would exceed any plausible amount of emissions from the aviation industry compatible with the overall climate change target. And therefore we're saying, if you're meeting your climate change target, which is legislated, and surely that must be the framework within which we work, that that implies that you will use some mechanism, whether carbon trading or capping, mm. price capping, in order to constrain demand to that level. See, I'm wondering if, rather than going to the trouble of expanding airport capacity, expanding runway capacity, and then having to introduce um, very significant um, uh, taxes, caps, and so on, in order to constrain the, um, the, the demand that that new capacity opens up. Why not just introduce the taxes in the first place and, and forget about the expansion? Easy, isn't it? I simply don't understand that point, actually. Sorry, I don't know quite what you mean. Well, you, you have said that if... If there is to be expansion, there needs to be an increase in, um, in, in either taxation on flights no, no, or, no. or we have said that, in order to that the price needs to increase to, a pay, to a, an amount that is compatible yeah. with the government's climate change target, yeah. it needs to increase. What you would be arguing for is getting the price now, but how do you determine what the overall increase in demand is? And I think in order to price to meet existing capacity, which would be arbitrary, as it were, not to allow any increase in existing capacity, would, in, in our view, be economically very damaging indeed. But you're increasing capacity and then having to um, significantly increase the, the price to constrain, to constrain demand. Why not just increase the price to constrain demand anyway? If you didn't increase capacity now, then the prices would go up anyway because the price to use this capacity... Yeah. Uh, would rise. So the issue is not that. The issue is whether you think you should be able allowing additional airport capa aviation capacity at all. And our view is that the economic costs of not allowing this city to have additional aviation capacity would be very high. And we think that would be unreasonable. And therefore, what we have tried to do is to thread a way between a, climate, a legislative climate change commitment and the needs of a growing, vibrant global city and try to strike a balance between them. And I have to say that the response to our interim report has been, from my point of view, quite encouraging because most people have thought that we have struck that balance appropriately. I'm out of time now, anyway. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. The